Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible in part by the Imlay Foundation and from viewers like you. You often hear about the sounds of nature, but you seldom hear about the voices in nature. A lot of performers like to practice out among the trees. In fact, two people you're going to meet say they get a certain creative freedom when they sing out in open spaces that they don't necessarily find in a studio. E.G. Kite is a blues singer. She sings solo or with her band, the E.G. Kite Trio. Here's a little taste of her music. I met E.G. at her place in Dublin, Georgia, where her thoughts turn into songs. It's where nature inspires. We have bonfires here. We hadn't had one in a long time, as you can see. Yeah. So this is your church. This is my church right here. Man, I can see why. I love it. I love it. It's the place I come to find peace and uh, calm, it, it just, it does your heart good. It just revives you to come out here. Well, and I know you had some serious health issues years ago, and uh, you came up with the three G's. What's that mean? The three G's, yeah, I had uh, encephalitis with meningitis with it, and they think it was from a mosquito bite. And then I got attacked by some dogs a couple of years ago. And uh, the three G's, people, well, my fans ask, they say, well, how did you get through all this and how do you do as well as you do? I say the three G's, God, goats, and guitars. <laughs> <laughs> I can do the God part, but I don't have a goat and I don't have a guitar. So. The three G's, you know, I, I get to the point, I say, oh, I have to go to the pond or I have to go to the goat pen or let me grab my guitar. And it, all three of them, you know, just have a positive influence on me and just calm me down. E.G. assured me that I would be laughing before I left. When you see us with her goats, you'll see why. But she gets serious when talking about the impact nature has on her songs and spirit. Nature has a lot to say. And it talks to me all the time. What's it saying? Well, if it's, if it's thunder and I hear a, a little bass guitar and music, you know, or if it's, if even the lightning sounds like uh, drums, like the cymbals crashing, you know, uh, or like what we hear now, the breeze coming through the trees is a, is a sweet little tune. And like, I don't know, you could just go on and on, like the birds. I mean, the birds singing. Oh. How, how sweet is that? Then she gave me a treat, baby goats. Hey, babies! What you doing? What you doing? Oh, they're going to look. Cash? Little sip? I told you they're hunting something to, to chew Come on. Here. Come here. Come here. I want you to meet these people. <laughs> hey, Sharon. This is Little Sip. She's named after her mama, Sip. Little Sip? Mm -hmm. Cute as you can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Usually they just run and run and run. We'll get them running. Okay, let me see. Come here, Cash. Yes. Come here, baby. So, this little is, Sip's a girl and Cash is a boy? Cash is a boy. He's named after Johnny Cash, the man in black. Oh, look, he's got little horns. Oh, he's got little horns. Look at you. Okay, let me see if I can get him to run.
usually they just run and run and run. Come on, children. When E.G. brings out the bottles, we get some action. <laughs> what was that? Was that a run or a bounce? <laughs> and now, as predicted, I'm laughing. These baby goats are just silly. Come on, let's go, let's run. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> Look here what I got. Look here what I got. <laughs> the way th they jump and twist their whole little bodies. Oh, yeah, they jump, and they do flips and twirls. And Come here. Do we you sit down or hold them up? You can just do it like this. They have to be bottle fed because their mother <laughs> didn't make it after giving birth. I guess you were hungry. Little Seth here is not having any trouble at all. <laughs> Tails wagging. Uh, they wag their tails when they, when you know, they're nursing on their mama. They do that. They'll get every drop. Well, I just got some on your face. I'm sorry. Well, I think I think she took care of that one. There's a little bit. You want to try a little, a little bit more? I'm picking up on the goat thing. You can't be serious or sad around these animals. And we haven't even gone to the big goat pen where E.G. will sing to her goats. No kidding. In the afternoon, we'll head to the goat pen, and if all goes as planned, E.G. will sing to the goats. How, how have they taken to the guitar? Not too well. <laughs> that little goat, you'll, you'll see him in a little bit. He tried to eat it. <laughs> he, he and his sister tried to eat the guitar until I would play it, then they would kind of run off. But as soon as I quit playing it, they would come back wanting to, wanting to bite the guitar. And sometimes I can go to the goat pen with it and they'll act, they'll come around and act like they're interested. Then the next time they run, yesterday I went, I went down there and I played the guitar for them and they just was nonchalant out there just grazing over there and didn't pay me a bit of attention. It varies. So we don't know what we're gonna get. We don't know what we're gonna get. We may not get much. <laughs> well, Tell me about goats, something that a lot of people might not know. About goats? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one of the reasons that, that uh, to me, they're stress relievers, they're comical. You cannot be around a goat without smiling. Uh, goats uh, have their own personalities. They have their own voicing. I, I recognize their voices. Uh, they. They don't like to be by themselves. They go through depression if they are. Really? Yes, and, and goats are very observant. Like, I can go in the goat pen and have my glasses on. Well, they don't particularly care for that. They notice that I have my glasses on. Or if it's cold and rainy, I might have my hoodie on with my hood on. They don't like that at all. Or I can take an umbrella in there. They sure don't like that. Well, that, what are they going to make of us? Well, we'll find out. We'll just have to give them a little time and let them calm down a little, and we'll see what they do. Time to visit the goat pen. She has a wide variety of goats, and they didn't seem bothered by us. E.G. is in her element. Riley B, Riley B, you're just as cute as can be. <laughs> Riley B, Riley B, you're just as cute as can be. The best thing about it, you belong to me. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Oh. Pick it, pick it, Riley B. At this point, the goats were calm enough for introductions. All right, all of these have names. This is... That is Crane. Her sister was Peaches, Peaches and Crane, and she'll soon be 14 years old. Wow, you're a pretty old girl. Yes. And let's see, little black. That's Skipper. This is Cotton Top. This is Sweet Pea. She's getting ready to have a new baby. This is her uh, babies. This is Honey Bee. This is my special needs goat, Hank. He's named after Hank Williams. Uh, Hank Williams had these lanky legs. Yeah. And, uh, Hank has had really a, a lot of problems with his legs. He was born that way, but he's he's a survivor. He works really hard at walking and running and getting by. He's just been a real inspiration to me and blessing. I can see why you love having these. This would make me laugh every day. Oh yeah, they, they, they just lift you up. I mean, if you're feeling down, you just come down here and they just, they'll love on you and, and, and you rub them and they're just, just absolutely precious. Hey, Queen. They bring a lot of comfort. E.G. even wrote a book about her goats, Things I've Learned from a Goat. Things like be kind and always keep a song in your heart. And here's a new song from E.G. I've been through some tough times But found peace of mind With the help of three things Dear to my heart They are Got goats and guitars <coughs> Whoa! Yeah. God was windy there. God hears my prayers. I know he's always there. My goats have lifted me up when life was hard. And strumming my guitar brings light out of the dark. Everyone has to find their own way. Whenever they face their darkest day. What works for me may not work for you. But God, goats, and guitars have helped me get through. When I start feeling down I remember how blessed I am To have these things That have played a big part In getting me this far Got goats and guitars Got goats and guitars.
Thank you. You made me jerk too. Oh, I just wrote that, so I was hoping I'd remember the lyrics. That was one of the best days I've had. Entertained by Goats and E.G. But there's someone else I want you to meet. She sings opera to cows. I met Leah Partridge at the farm she lives on about 30 minutes from Athens. I have been singing opera for about 20 years and uh, just, I guess in the last 10 years, added on the, the teaching component and teach out of um, teach in Atlanta and online now, so I kind of have more of a reach, which is awesome. And then I've always loved gardening. I started working in my uncle's flower shop when I was 12 years old in Lincolnton, Georgia. And so I put myself through school doing floral design and doing that sort of thing, weddings. And as I started traveling, for opera, I would go to the great gardens of the world, and I just love doing when that. When you sing, do you think the cows even know what you I doing? think that they're all, you know, I have played around with the cows at, from time to time when I'm out there just in the morning time, when I'm harvesting in the garden, we're out there at the same time. So having them, you know, kind of be a part of the whole process, it's, I don't know, we're on the same time. It's like I get up in the morning to harvest my flowers, before sunset and so I'm watching the Sun come up and they're there and then they go off and then I go off during the heat of the day and I do something else and then I come back in the evening and there here they are again watching the sunset in the same field and that's when I'm kind of doing something else whether it's you know doing something with bug maintenance or but we're kind of on the in the sink, same sinking path so you I'm always cows. <laughs> yes I'm always aware of them and they like to chime in from time to time they kind of I heard them out there today I said they must be warming up, knowing what I was getting up to. Mooing. Mooing. <laughs> <laughs> no mooing today, just a crystal clear voice ringing out across the pasture. Es lebt eine Wille, ein Wald mit Wein. Ein Jäger schaut sie im Felsengestein. Dem Burschen, dem Wurden zeigen zu sich. Er schaut und schaut auf das Waldmädlein hin. Und ein Gekanter schau, was den jungen Jägers Mann sehnsucht. Finger still zu seufzen an. Will ja, oh wilde Welt Windelein, fass mich und lass mich dein Trautliebste sein. I think the rhythm of nature and the, the, the complete um, togetherness of nature and that it's always going to function like there's a balance out here I think you can find that in your art I think if you respond well to what's going on in, in nature you can apply that to your music because you have to have a balance and you have to have a focus and you have to have kind of a note to note aspect I come out here and I have learned thousands of pages of music out here and I'm able to do that better here than if I were you know in a busy apartment somewhere because I can just center in, I can kind of get into a very focused present place to focus intently for about 45 minutes and then go take a walk. And then the system and the presence of nature, the, the, the way in which everything's just unfolding. So like when the cows come in in the morning, they're here, they're doing their thing, they're gonna go away out of the heat of the pasture during the day and then by the end of the day they're back and you know you've, you've completed your own cycle in some way that's similar to that. So there's a patience and a timing, you know, and there's, it's such a contrast from being in the city, which I love too, but to come out here and to be able to have this place to kind of nurture 
a creative component to myself and also, you know, dig into the difficulties of the music and have that just kind of shut the world out has been just an enormous treat. You know, I think in some ways opera found me, and I know that sounds kind of, you know, esoteric for sure, but I grew up singing in church and singing gospel music and country music, and I loved pop music on the radio. If I could have been Whitney Houston, I would have loved to have done that, but I didn't have that style of voice. So I went off to Mercer University thinking that I would just teach music, or I didn't really know. You know, I didn't grow up going to opera or even to the symphony, so I didn't really know what there would be there. But um, I had the right people come into my life and say, hey, you should try this. And then once I figured out that opera was you know, um, it's like being a vocal athlete. It's like being a really, you know, strong interpreter of like what the voice can do, like as a machine, as a expressive part of all of us. Like I was just so moved that, you know, a voice could be heard over a 40 to 50 piece orchestra. And then once I started to study that, I was hooked on the stories. And then of course I figured out, well, People get paid to go all over the world and do that and dress up in fun costumes. And I was like, hmm, I want to do that. <laughs> so um, tell me about this uh, little dog who has chosen my lap. <laughs> so this is Bingo. And Bingo has had a, a wonderful career himself. He appeared in the Atlanta Opera's production of La Boheme as Musetta's dog in act two. And he actually had his own little dressing room and his own spotlight. And he has been a Devo ever since. Oh, I'm. I mean, he, he didn't ask permission. So bingo, bingo. You are quite the ham. You did not ask permission to sit on my lap. You just hopped right up. And now you made sure that you were gonna get on camera. I, I, I got your number. <laughs> I'm like. Oh, I just, let, let me lay down here. <laughs> Settling in. Yeah, you've got a great life out here, I tell you. Bingo. Camera left. <laughs> when there weren't many opera productions because of the pandemic, Leah developed a garden of flowers to sell. This is called Jewels of Opar. It's just a wonderful filler to put in your garden. And you know, it turns these berries, and then if you want to dry them, they turn a little dark, but you could spray paint them gold, and they look really good in a Christmas tree. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, so this is just stuff you picked. Today. I just picked them this morning, what we have left coming into the end of the season. Some of the celosia feather, which is just so pink and beautiful this year. And I've got a couple of dahlias coming in down here. and. This is lemon eucalyptus, and that smells so good. So just a handful of things that are still blooming, but it's, it's a huge passion of mine to grow. So you teach students how to sing, you grow flowers and sell them, and you are an opera singer. Yes, multi-passionate entrepreneur is what I like to call it. I, I, would, I would agree with that. <laughs> That's, I mean, it, it is so funny. I, and then with the cows in the background, it's just, it's fun. It it's is fun. fun. It is fun. Very fortunate. But I think your dog wants to go home with you. Probably. I think I'm going to have to have a talk with him. <laughs> like E.G. Kite's land, this farm is a place of peace. Watching Leah practice with the cows is hilarious. And understanding that just like E.G., this is her inspiration. A place she can sing to the sky, the flowers, or the cows. There is a sense of freedom when you can develop your skills alone in an open space under the sky. What you sing, what a lot of people sing, relates to what we're seeing right here. What, oh, well, think about songs like Blue Skies and Tall Trees in Georgia. There are uh, lots of songs. Oh, so many songs. Uh, sunny Side of the Street. Rainy Night in Georgia, just so many. Look, uh, what about Louis Armstrong? What a wonderful world, I see trees of green. You know, it's just so many songs that, that nature has influenced. In a way, Mother Nature is music. Those are words from Tom Horner, part of the E.G. Kite Trio. He wrote, 
It could be said that each of the overtures of our seasons are like a grand natural orchestra playing never-ending medleys and movements. They are bombastic, soothing, gentle, exciting, beautiful, moody, even mad. That's why performers who watch and pay attention are inspired to sing to Mother Nature. This show has made me think of things a little differently. In a recent storm, the thunder was so loud, it made me think of cymbals crashing in an orchestra. Now, E.G. and Leah always connect music and nature. I'm just beginning to. I'm Sharon Collins. We'll see you next time. Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible in part by the Imlay Foundation and from viewers like you.